<laughs> Good morning and welcome back to Sun Up on Seven. My glasses are foggy. But <laughs> that's 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 a woes of a glasses wearer. But just before the break, we were joined by representatives from the Department of Youth Services who are talking about their upcoming customer service 101 training launching on February 5th. That's next week, Tuesday. If you have not signed up as yet, please go to the Department of Youth Services Facebook page and access them through their online portal. But now, as promised, we are joined here with the Honorable, Del Ms. Honorable Dolores Valderamas Garcia who will be talking about her ministry as well as the current sticky situation with the Mayan land rights and the issues surrounding that. So good morning, Honorable Valderamas Garcia. How are you this morning? And welcome to our couch, first time. I like to sit on this green couch. Thank you. Oh, you like it? <laughs> I feel like people really do like it. Thank you for having me. What Thank I have to say is, me. anytime I say your name, I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so much words to say. <laughs> for your name. <laughs> it's so long. It's a long name. We don't have nothing to shorten it. You could call me Miss D. Miss oh, D. All right, too. there we go. A lot of people call me Miss D. Perfect. <laughs> so that's so, so, God, thank you for that. First problem solved for the day. <laughs> so, Miss D, you are the Minister of Human Development, Families, and Indigenous Peoples Affairs. That is so. And in this current situation here, we're dealing with Indigenous Peoples Affairs. Could you give our viewers a little synopsis yeah. of what is happening right now so that they could understand as well? A lot is happening. And let me start with what is positive, really. Um, we have done outreach to the six Garifuna communities of the South. As a matter of fact, we've been in Barranco twice. And we absolutely love it down there, you know? Um, a lot to talk about with our Garinugu brothers and sisters. But also I want to say that there's much more outreach that we need to do. Mm -hmm. For example, there's a boundary issue, if I could put it that way, between the villages of Barranco and Midway. Okay. Midway is a much younger village, if I could put it that way. But it is a village that seems to be expanding with the Kekchi Maya people there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we are here not to dictate to anybody. We're here to mediate and to facilitate, if you could put it that way. And I'm very happy to say I, I have visited Sebastian Cayetano's Luba Garifuna Museum right here in the Lee City. It's a trove of rich information and history. We visited Penn and in Ingrid Cayetano at their studio in Dangriga, mm -hmm. where, by the way, we have come back to it, but where, by the way, they have a, a little portrait of Nora Param. Oh. Right. Yes. And, our outreach is continuing and it's enriching, if I could put it that way. Right. But of course, the major aspect of the work of the Indigenous Peoples Affairs Ministry does have to do with the Maya land case. Yeah. A year ago, we appointed um, attorney, Mr. Greg Choke, as our commissioner. And he has done a tremendous amount of work um, in the year. And a lot that is very positive has happened. I don't think there's anybody in Belize who knows more about this case than Greg himself, you know? Right. And maybe that is what puts him in with a target on his back sometimes, you know? From the 10 points of agreement were signed with the Musa administration back in 2000. And by the way, I was there in San Antonio Village when that occurred. I used to wear skirts in those days, you know? <laughs> and Johnny Briseño, our prime minister, was there. Um, neither of us had any gray hair at that time. <laughs> that was a more youthful time. <laughs> but I want to tell you that from that time, yeah. Greg and many others, Julian Cho, many others have been, in, have been involved in the struggle for the Maya land rights. And now it is common knowledge that through a lot of work, which nobody is trying to take away from any of the advocates and proponents, mm -hmm. but through a lot of work, we had various judgments of the Caribbean. Well we, well, we had various judgments of the courts. Right. First of all, the ruling of Chief Justice Abdullah Conte, then Chief Justice in 2007. Then, of course, there was an evolution with um, further court rulings at the Court of Appeal level. And then it ended up, as we all know, right. at the CCJ, the Apex Court of Belize. And nobody held a gun to anybody's head or back and said, sign this. Mm -hmm. It was an agreement 
of both parties. No, if both parties agree to something, we have to try to implement. Yeah. You know the usual term, kick the can down the road. That's the usual term. But let us just suffice to say that not much happened between 2015 and 20, 20, 2020 going into 2021, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And we are pleased to say that there has been a tremendous amount of consultation. Greg knows every village of, of Toledo, all 41. I personally, in the past year, have been to 14. Okay. And we have held consultations. I'm not just counting just right. to say, oh, I've been there. We are holding consultations with people, respectful consultations. And the Maya people of the South, I must tell you, are not all speaking with one voice. There are various views, various views. And I will get into some of the contentious issues, but please let me put it on the table for all our Belizean friends throughout the length and breadth of this country. We are in no fight with anybody. Okay. Okay. The government has a responsibility and a duty to carry out the consent order, yes, but to attempt to remain above the fray when it comes to the, the clashing views on the Maya governance system in the South. But at the same time, we won't abdicate, as we, had, as we said in our press conference of about a week or so ago. We won't abdicate. That responsibility must be taken seriously. And not because one particular group or small group of, of leaders, etc., might say, well, this is the way everything must go. Must it be that way? Let us sit down and discuss. Let us sit, sit down and discuss. I know, I know there's, a, there's a, a high contention, not only mm -hmm. with the, the Mayan communal land rights, but actually with uh, Attorney Greg Chuck himself, mm -hmm. who in the previous days before his appointment, was an activist yeah. in this very same thing. And now some of the Mayan leaders down south are viewing him as, you know what, on the other side of the table now. What do you have to say about that contention mm -hmm. there? I would have to say about that contention that it isn't so. Greg has never stopped being an advocate. Okay. And he has said that he feels honored to have been offered the opportunity to work with government in terms of this implementation, in terms of the, and, and in terms of the outreach that we need to do. Okay. But let me say, in one year, um, um, Renata and Brandon, um, in one year, we have managed to consult, to table, to very, very widely consult the FPIC protocol that has now been filed before the Caribbean Court of Justice at the end of January. The final copy of it has gone in. Some people are unhappy about that, that it is a final copy, but that is what the court required us to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have filed the FPIC protocol. We can talk more about it. We have also revised what is called the roadmap. The roadmap is the agenda where we are do going forward, you know? So a lot has been done. A, a, a tremendous amount of work has been done. We've hired two international consultants. Uh, two very fine ladies, mm -hmm. one from um, um, the United States and one from Brazil. She lives in Colombia now, but these are experts on international indigenous people's affairs. And I can say to you definitively mm -hmm. that the protocol that this government has filed with the court is up to international standards. So we should be rejoicing, actually. We should, let, let me say this, and I'll, I'll jump right in even before you ask me to say, I believe that the difficulty is not the FPIC. People are happy about it. The, there are two issues, I think, that have taken the forefront in terms of what the contention uh, is. And unfortunately, you know, there was a little meeting in Laguna Village um, on Sunday, and some people got up and said, we're calling for the removal of Greg Chalk. But that, I believe, is caused by misunderstanding and misapprehension. It might be a little bit of personality, one-upmanship, if I could put it that way as yeah. well, you know? Mm -hmm. But there really are two issues that cause a little bit of discombobulation, if I could put it that way. Right. The first issue is that of, I would say, 
representation. Representation. The spokesperson or persons of the Maya Leaders Alliance, as they call themselves, um, are saying that for representation of a village, the government should be dealing only with the people who were the final appellants in the case that went before the Caribbean Court of Justice. We take a different view, and I think the government has a responsibility to take a different view because we would like to be as inclusive as possible. As a matter of fact, the, mod the motto of our ministry is equality and inclusion. So whereas we have some advocates saying that the TAA, the Toledo Alcaldes Association, is the sole entity that you all should be dealing with, yeah. we, we must differ. We must differ, you know? Because there is SATIM, the Sarstoon, right. you know, the National Institute for Indigenous Management. There's the Kekchi Council of Belize, the Toledo Maya Cultural Council. These are other groupings of people who in the Maya struggle coming all the way up from 2000, have always been involved in the advocacy. Merely because they may not have been involved in the latest case that went to the CCJ, in our view, that is not a reason to exclude them at this point. Whereas the spokespersons for the, the MLA are now saying, what are you doing talking to Satim? What are you doing talking to KCB? And we are saying, well, we have a responsibility to talk to everybody. Yeah. So that may be one of the bones um, of a little bit of, uh, of contention. But the position that we have taken is that we must be inclusive and we are willing to sit down on a green couch or anywhere <laughs> else uh -huh. and talk and reason and don't fight about this. You know? Yeah. So, so the, the, issue, the issue of who the appellants were at the final court of, of, right. of, of the final appeal to the Caribbean Court of Justice. I think that is something we can deal with if everybody has goodwill, yeah. you know? So because it is, not, it is not one set of people. It is not one set of people. We have to deal with oh. everybody of the South and there are different views. Big Falls, as a matter of fact, they are saying, we don't want nothing to do with them. Customary land rights. Now, Let's talk. I know there were some, some yes, yes. views so on that. that. Let's talk. Yes. Is the consultation still taking place? What's happening right now on that? Absolutely. Because it Absolutely. seems that they are still very much upset we were talking with them. And yes, so yes, yes, yes. How do you feel that they're gonna, we're going to come to a middle ground here where I wouldn't say everybody is fully happy, but everybody realized like, okay, this is how we're going to be able to find a just, mm. um, silver lining in all of this mess that's of coming course. on for them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a matter of sitting down. It's a matter of sitting down respectfully. Let me, let me, let me call somebody's name this morning, and all respect to her, Ms. Lisela Lamia, who used to be the commissioner in the previous um, administration. We believe that the approach was contentious at the time, and now Lisel has morphed into being the representative of a very large company well, not a large company, but a right. company that owns a large tract of land mm -hmm. in the, well, you know, I have to use the word own very carefully here. But if there is a large tract of thousands of acres in the Indian Creek area. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is contention because mm -hmm. the villagers of Indian Creek are saying, no. this is our yes. traditional right. customary land. And the thing about it, the thing about it, and it's, it might be difficult for Belizeans to wrap our heads of land tenure, the lawyers would know all about that, right? Mm -hmm. right. It's a different form of land tenure. Different from having a, a lease or a title, piece of title right. or whatever. Uh, yeah. Nonetheless, it is ownership. And if I have a piece of land down in Otosha or Medina Bank or wherever, my title granted by the government of Belize does not necessarily trump and do away with those customary land rights because what the court ordered is that the rights of the Maya people are a pre-existing right and that somebody's land title to a private piece of land mm -hmm. has not extinguished. 
those rights. Mm, okay. Somebody may not like to hear that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> somebody might not like to hear that. Right. Mm -hmm. But that is not the, 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 the entire issue. Let me get back. Miss Alamia, I believe, has at times adopted an unfortunate aggressive attitude in terms of how does the Bowdoin Creek Company um, coexist with mm -hmm. the Maya people of Indian Creek. I believe that there was some unfortunate aggression that was unnecessary. You know, take big boulders and throw them in at the middle of the road where the people want to go to the dump. That's not on. Right. And it's yeah. not good. However, I am now encouraged, encouraged to see that Miss Alamia is, ta is taking a different approach. Okay. She's saying, let us sit down and talk to Miss Christina and Mr. Pablo and Mr. Domingo Ba, the chairman of the Toledo Alcaldes Association. Come to us in a friendly manner. Mm. Make we sit down and talk. Okay. Maybe when we get up, we could sing Kumbaya. <laughs> you know, that, that, is, that is basically... So I am encouraged to see that attitude. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not encouraged. And I don't think it is helpful when you bring a little group of people together at Laguna Village on Sunday right. and say, get rid of Greg, Greg Chuck. That, yes. is, that is absolutely not helpful. But and please ask a couple of questions, but I will get on to the second contentious, the issue of representation, as I told you. Right. Uh -huh. And I am giving you government's considered position. And I am here to say that the government considers that the FPIC protocol that was filed by the 31st of January this year before the Caribbean Court of Justice is a final version. In okay. other words, we know we engage in any big back and forth. It was widely consulted, mm -hmm. and government took the view that we can't get everybody's signature. So if one person or two persons are standing up and saying, but I never sign it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? Um, the fact that you didn't sign doesn't mean that, it is, that we did not consult. We did, and this FPIC meets international standards. There have to be exceptions, Brandon and Renata, when it comes to public health issues, public emergencies, national security. Those would be exceptions as to when it would be that government must consult or not consult. The consultation process is required. Right. right. It is required. We have to do it in a proper and respectful way now. But there will be exceptions. I understand. There is a court case on the table right now, the Halakte ruling of Madam Chief Justice Michelle Arana. The government is in the process of appealing that ruling because we believe that there may, some, there may be there mm -hmm. some important issues that need to be ventilated at a higher court level. You know? So... I'm saying a lot, but the bottom line is that government has responsibility. Mr. Greg Chuck has the confidence of certainly me as minister and of the cabinet and government of Belize. And we say to all our partners, not the attack women, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe what the people were doing was saying that, Instead of removing Greg, Greg Chuck, maybe they're calling for my removal. <laughs> he works with me. You know, he works with me. I thank you for that, the whole clarification yes. on this. But I'll come back to the other issue, but please ask me. Yes, <laughs> yes. I wanted to ask you one, this yes. final question um, here, as it deals with Nora Param. Now. Yeah. Um, no, but make a finish, though. If you don't mind, make a finish the other contentious issue. Okay, but we're wrap, 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 wrap hands. We're from there, we're yes. deaf on timing. Yes, yes. we, we want to make as, sure we're deaf As Belizeans would say, we're deaf on timing. Yes. Yes. On timing. yes. <laughs> okay. Very quickly, uh -huh. the traditional Maya governance system is somewhat different from that of Western democracies. Right. Mm -hmm. In Western democracies, as ours, you could say, you elect a, an area rep and the area rep represent you, etc. But that is not so for the traditional Maya governance system. It is the villages at the village level, each individual village, that is, the, that is the supreme authority. The difficulty that we are seeing is that certain spokespeople are now saying that the Toledo Alcalde Association is the sole representative of the Maya people. Mm. But as an association, 
it doesn't represent every single Maya village. You have to go to each individual village. Right. So that may be, like I say, we could discuss it more later. Yeah. But that is the other little point of contention, okay. if I could put it that yeah, way. Yeah, because then there's a lot of discrepancies there of who yes. you're presenting. You're not talking to some people. And that's kind of been the big thing where it's like, I yeah. wasn't consulted. And then you're like, well, we did make consultations. Absolutely. And so it's like, but with who? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So yeah. there's right, that, that right. whole that yeah, tension yeah. has been built definitely because of yes. that. And we would like to diffuse it. Mm -hmm. And we are saying, we are saying as we did at, on, at the other media houses, etc. Let us sit down at the table. Mm -hmm. There's no need to fight. The Maya people of, of this country are too important. The development of Toledo is too important because we have to think about the representatives of the people there as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Honorable Mike Espat and Honorable Oscar Rekena, you know? Mm -hmm. But let me, let me wrap up that little issue. Like I said, we depend timing. <laughs> let me wrap up that little issue by saying, especially to Miss Christina and Mr. Domingo and Mr. Miss and the people who are around them, you know? Um, let make we no fight. Mm -hmm. There's no need to fight. We actually, I believe we're on the same page when it comes to promoting the representation of the Maya people and making sure that we get things right in terms of the development yeah. the recognition of the Maya customary ownership. And the next steps, of course, will be to file a policy that will have to be first approved by cabinet. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, putting in place the legal and administrative framework for the recognition of the third party rights and the Maya rights. Brandon, you know one can work for we? <laughs> you, Offered a job. You would on Brandon need a job. <laughs> can work for we and we need an attorney. We might need two or three. But no, I'm, I'm saying that to say it's an important and a very serious issue. And if government is committed to that rollout, yeah. then make we do it. But we have to do it hand in hand. Right. Hand in hand. Definitely. Hand in Definitely. hand. Well, sadly, because of the time, we, I, don't know if we, I don't think we can get to our Nora Para. Question. I'm not sure if the producers will allow it based on time. Mm -hmm. Let me say but quickly. Just let me, let, uh, yeah. yeah. Allow me. Allow me. I'm, you, they don't want to kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, not my ear. Not my ear. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. One of the questions that were, yes. or the, ask, the yes. main question that was asked, <clears throat> we all know the, the story of Nora Param, um, mm -hmm. and she was a victim of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in those times, she wasn't offered that assistance. Yeah. So now this, this, this whole... Pardon. Uh, the pardon for Nora Param. Come, people might say it's a little bit too late for, the, for all of this to happen. Okay. Yeah, she's already lost her so life and everything. Mm -hmm. People are asking, shouldn't the family instead receive some type of restitution I see. for what has yes, happened? Yes, yes. Well, excellent question. It's never too late to right a wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir Hilary Beckles, the Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, is calling for reparations for the slave trade right. uh -huh. and for slavery. It's never too late, Brandon and Renata. So make up, answer that right off. Mm -hmm. okay. It wouldn't be, in my view, a, a posthumous pardon. Let me correct what I said in, in, in the House of Representatives. Okay. It wouldn't be a pardon so much as an exoneration. Because we do not believe that what happened at the time was a murder. If there was manslaughter, even if it came up to that level, mm -hmm. right. We do not believe that justice was at all carried. And it is never too late to make a reparation for the issue of domestic violence. When Ms. Ketchel Trapp was beating her with one stick, I want to use the bad word, but I want to hold back, right? Mm -hmm. When he was beating um, this poor little four foot 11 lady with one stick, she was ironing and the kerosene iron, there was a pan of kerosene. And she, defending yeah. herself, threw the kerosene over him and ran. She ran. Mm -hmm. The next thing she knew, now tell me, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the next thing, apparently, when you read the accounts of what happened, the next thing she knew, mm -hmm. she heard this commotion. And when she ran and saw the man on fire, she ran for help. She ran for help. She ran for help. It appears that he may have lit a cigarette when he went into the latrine. Uh, 
You see? Okay. So, but please don't take my word for it. No, family. We will have to talk to the family. She has children who are still alive. Right. Mm -hmm. The Param and the Williams family of Forest Home and, mm -hmm. and Toledo. Please, I would never try to advocate for something without that respectful consultation. You know, I would, but I want to tell you a little story. Judith Alpuche, the former CEO of Human Development, and I, some years ago, 10, maybe 12 years ago, we drove to Orange Walk to interview Pinita Espejo. Agrippina Espejo, I think she was a former mayor of Orange Walk. Pinita was a young nurse's aide at the time when Ketchel Trap was carried into the hospital with 80% burns over his body or something to mm -hmm. that effect. Mm -hmm. Pinita told us, now you might say this a fourth and fifth hand, but Pinita told, and we made notes, yeah. Pinita told Judith Alpuche and I, because we've been working on this issue, many other people have worked on right, it. Right, right. So yeah. please, I don't want to take the, 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 the benefit. The, the, you're the, the, the only the, one, yeah. No, mm -hmm. absolutely not, absolutely not. Pinita Espejo told us that as a young nurse's aide, working in the hospital at the time, when they brought in the man, he was conscious, and he, Pinita said that he told her the lady never do it. The lady never do it. When she tried to apparently get into the courtroom, she was barred. Who is a little 17-year-old, little yeah, mestizo girl mm -hmm. in the colonial administration? Yeah, you're nobody in time. The, the court-appointed attorney for her defense was a white lawyer named McKinstry. I don't know what kind of defense went on, Brandon. We can only imagine. And we would have to go back and look at the entire court transcripts. What I can tell you, though, is that the thousands of people back in 1962 or 63, when this thing occurred, wanted an exoneration or a pardon or a mercy mm -hmm. for Ms. Baran. Ms. Baran. For Ms. Baran. You know? It's never too late to right a wrong, you know? Thank you for that, Steve. That, that's, uh, and I please, hope our viewers out there really please, understand. Please, yes, yeah. absolutely. But we have to be in consultation with the family respectfully. Right. Yeah. And I believe the time has come for the Nora Param story definitively to be written. You don't want, you don't want a lawyer, but are you an, also an author? Would you do the research? I know, I know that the Honorable Justice Schumann is actually writing a book on this. I know that she has been interested in it. She, she has been writing on it, yes. So I'm, I'm waiting for that book to come out. Well, let well. us talk to her and see how far it is, how yeah, long We're it gonna is. We're going to see what comes <laughs> from this. And I mean, yes. there's a lot of people that go and pick up that copy. Yes, definitely. I, I will really be one of them because it's say. very, very it, it needs It needs definitive, it, it needs good, good, good research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It needs good research. Not only the court transcripts, but also talking to people who were around at the time. There's definitely um, a lot that needs to go into so we can yes. get the correct story. But yes. I really have to say thank you so yes. much, Ms. D, for being here, for giving us the whole synopsis, the, the night. Yeah, <laughs> that jam-packed session on the coach. <laughs> I feel like because I will never invite you so long or you never come so long that you say, you know what, I will take up this time and I will have fun. I mean, they hear me, you know? <laughs> but we truly appreciate it. And remember, no, we don't talk. No, your segments, are too, your segments are too short to really get into the, <laughs> into the meat of the matter, man. Yes. I understand. So it's, well, we could talk to the producers. We'll talk to the producers. Yeah, <laughs> yes. so again, thank you so much. We're going to invite you back, though. Remember, we don't talk about this already. So now you're last time. You don't like the coach, so that means you have to come back. back. And to... again, full disclosure, third third uh, segment here, you have to dance. And fifth segment, we might give you a mug. Yes. Say again? So the Say third again. segment, you are dance, right? So be prepared. <laughs> yes, uh, you're going to get ready for put your it's a, to it's a, it's it's a risk that we're willing yeah, to take. Yeah, don't make him bow. Yeah, don't <laughs> <laughs> you can pick this song. I'll give you that privilege, right? But thank you again so much for being thank here. You. It is a pleasure, guys. I, it's always a pleasure to be among you young people. It make you feel younger. I never, <laughs> I never forget the late um, Carlos Santos. He was such a fine gentleman. He's of blessed memory now. My CEO's dad, you know? Mm -hmm. And when Miss Joan Musa and all of us would go around him, he would say, Good afternoon. How are you, young ladies? Well, all away. You know, <laughs> we. <laughs> no, no. There's never, there's never any reason not to big up people, not right. to be friendly, 
not to be outgoing. You Most know? definitely. So, enjoy. Yes. So, enjoy thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so with yes. that, we go to our next commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be talking about the deals that are coming this February. We got entry plans. We got all kind of increased speeds and a digital wallet all for you. So stay tuned for that exciting promotion. You do not want to miss out on that conversation. We'll be right back. Thank you.